Hello everyone, this is Will. And this is Alex. And welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Oh, Sabrina. Mostly. Mm-hmm. Mm, Sabrina. Wow. So, yeah. Another movie about a bunch of, a group of women <laughs> kicking ass and taking names, except they didn't really kick ass in this one. Excuse me? I don't know, Will. They shot like 50 people? In the last 20 minutes? What do you call that? I don't know. They don't kick anything. They oh, yeah, there's, shoot. there's some kicking. Well, yeah. Kicking of guys in the face. Who are just... They just can't do anything. Yeah, no, not at all. They just get kicked. They just sit there and just take it. Mm-hmm. They just take it. Just take it. Like they should. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, another Ted V. Mickles flick yes. for you. <laughs> Two in a it, row. In case you couldn't get enough of the... Getting mad, man. <laughs> of the goddamn madman. Of my hero. Ted V. Michaels. My personal hero. Yeah, fucking Ted. I just... I look up to this man. Yeah. We're gonna see more movies from him, too. I cannot wait. He's gonna be a repeat he, viewer. He knows. He understands me. Like Al Adamson. Yes. These people understand me. Yeah, exactly. They know what I want. And you want bad movies. I want fucking nonsense. And, oh, we got it tonight. Yes. Yes. Lots of hour and 31 minutes of complete nonsense. Mm-hmm. And, thank Christ, this is significantly more entertaining than uh, the last one. No. The Blood Orgy of the She-Devils. Oh, God. I think anything, uh, anything's better than that, to be honest. No. Yes. Curse of the Headless Horseman. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I'm leaving this podcast. <laughs> Monos. Ugh. Yeah, tonight's movie was The Doll Squad. Yep, The Doll Squad, directed by our hero, Ted V. Mickles. As the, we didn't already the mention man. it. Yeah, the man. The legend. The myth. The legend. The, Just the scholar. The fucking greatest man to ever direct movies <laughs> ever. Better than Uwe Boll. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess we'll get into it a little bit um do we get the weird color saturated things no yet? no sorry there's something that happens before that isn't there? yeah the rocket oh that's right yeah so they, there's these two guys in an office watching a, a missile launch at cape canaveral mm-hmm. um and it's like a, a really important space mission that's going on yeah they call it like space shuttle 17 or some shit yeah just some i'm sure he just threw a number at it and was yeah. just like you know what let's just do this it sounds sci-fi yeah just do that exactly so uh we get a scene of them watching the tv a bunch and like they're switch like you know people are switching panels they're being all ready for this big launch and then they finally launch it and it's going up in the sky and they get a, a, a message like a radio interference yeah and some guy like you should have listened to me now you'll pay the price and then it explodes does it explode though well you, in you, theory you mean it just disappears from the frame no will i mean a superimposed explosion happens yeah like a firework and then it's gone yeah it just disappears it and vanishes. they go to a room with a computer that they call Big Bertha. Yes, Bertha tells them that they need women for this job. Well, no, that's after the guy turns on a bunch of fucking switches in the loudest room I've ever heard in any movie yeah. ever. Yes. He um, turns on, like, every machine possible, and it's, like, almost incoherently loud. Big Bertha is big. Yeah. She's she sh- thick. She thick. <laughs> she thick. She thick. She all over the room, Will. She, well, she knows how to print those thick reports, Kate. He has to turn on, like, 50 machines to get big fucking Bertha yeah. to print out a paper that tells them that you need the doll squad. Yeah. And then prints get, out and start print, starts printing out a bunch of names. And then we get these... W- the opening credits. Which is this funk music. Terrible funk music. It's Excuse bad. Excuse me. That's bad funk music. No. Yes. It's the greatest. No, it's not. This this is the greatest Don't soundtrack. Don't give this fucker any credit. This is the greatest soundtrack ever. 
You know what? I take it back. Yes. You're right. It's the, the only thing would have been better is if they put the James Bond ripoff song on the opening credits instead of the end. Mm. Clearly. You know, complete that because then the opening credits are all these scenes that you will see later, but they put like ridiculous color filters on them. Yep. Like orange. Like orange and orange and like yellow. And it's like super saturated. Or like blue. And like you can just barely see them, but it's so. <laughs> or like a sat oversaturated green with some purple. If or purple, like you know, like some of our uh, our ad our ad posters, like it almost gave me a fucking seizure. It's like if I like turn the saturation up way high on like our little ad posters. If I had epilepsy, <laughs> I get a fucking seizure. Probably from this nonsense. My eyes hurt. Like, yes, legitimately hurt by the end of the credits. Yes, it's ridiculous. So, after that, after the glorious credits, um, we get the the guys talking that just watched the shuttle blow up, mm -hmm. and they go talk to their secretary, and they're talking about how they were sent a message, and they're like, okay, go no, get... No, a messenger came. Yeah, a messenger came. Go get the messenger. And I got, a girl goes into the office and literally brings, brings a fucking cage with a pigeon in it. Yes, that's the messenger. That's their messenger. Uh huh. And this is the scene where also the main woman comes in. Mm. Which at first I wasn't sure if like, she was supposed to be the leader Sabrina. of the doll squad. Yeah. yeah, Sabrina. Wearing way too much makeup. My god. Oh, yeah. Like, her and, skin like, color is like kind of tan. A ridiculously bright red outfit. Yeah. The whole movie is like really colorful oddly <laughs> colorful actually. yeah it's like it looks like a it almost looks like a looney tunes cartoon so they start talking to her about how she's supposed to put together this doll squad right yes and how they want her to like assemble a team that can take down this guy yes and, and... Um, remember um they want more time because they don't want to cancel the next space right. shuttle thing and they're trying so, to convince the president not to either yeah so uh he gets a call from the president on his phone that has no uh, numbers on it yep it looks like if you've ever seen the powerpuff girls the mayor yes the mayor's phone powerpuff yeah. girls ripped this movie off yeah they did mm -hmm. yep um because i guess his phone is only connected to the president only to the president. because it's just a red phone it has like a a light bulb, a light bulb in the middle yeah with that's no numbers. it it's just connected to the president whatever and the president calls him and he asks him, like, can we have two more weeks? And he's like, okay. Like, will that be enough for you? And she's like, yeah, that'll be enough. So she starts assembling the team. The team. She goes to a... Uh, so a karate, like a karate dojo, quote-unquote dojo. It's uh, not really... This, I, it looks like this woman knows nothing about karate. It looks like everyone in the scene knows nothing about so karate. So it's just uh, your obligatory, like karate training there's like 20 sequence. people like 20 people just punching pretend and, fighting yeah, pretend fighting and she goes there and she talks to her and she says some shit and i could not hear a single word i'm gonna say this right she now said. the audio in this movie was all fucking <laughs> over the place like it was like yeah some you could some people like most of the people you could hear very clearly mm -hmm. but then there's like those few that like you could not hear anything they were yeah. fucking saying like like either they were too quiet or there was too much background noise some issue i just i didn't understand yeah. like how he did that like because like some like was very clear like especially sabrina like the main characters yeah. you could all hear but then there was those few people that were like we'll get to our favorite part yeah <laughs> oh yes so as she's there these guys get out of their car before it even stops remember mm -hmm. they just like their car is like not even fully stopped and they just bail out of it so and they follow her then they 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 just like hang out outside the dojo yeah and i guess no one notices and the karate girl gets off work or whatever well, she stops first, um so it doesn't show that yet oh you're right yeah so she leaves because she's like yeah yeah sabrina she tells leaves her because she meet me at this place at yep. nine and then she leaves, and then she goes to a a very colorful hospital. It looked like a home. 
No, it, it looks doesn't like, look like any hospital I've ever seen. It looks like an elementary school. Like a, I don't even know. Like the the walls are painted like orange and yellow and blue. It's it's the most it's the hippest hospital. The it's the cream of the crop. You go to this hospital and it's a party. This is the disco hospital. Yes. Okay? <laughs> this is this is the discotheque of hospitals. Yes. Yeah. You know those normal hospitals are just white walls. Fuck that. Fuck that. We want colorful. Yes. Man. You want on. a party. Party in the hospital. She goes and I guess this woman's working as a nurse. She tells her and then she's like fine and then she leaves and immediately this fucking bozo with a he just has a cigarette in his mouth, an unlit cigarette in his mouth. He just wanders in the room and just shoots her in the head. Yeah, he's like he just shoots her in the head and then they it shows the the karate girl yeah. getting off of work or whatever. And then those two And then the two bozos, bozos yeah. chase her and she like evades them for a while by like putting a dumpster in front of them and Yes, they're chasing them. her and uh she just like wheels this dumpster in front of them. And it delays them for, like, one second. <laughs> so she tries to fight him off, but then gets... Sh- sh- one of them just shoots her in the face, and you see, like, a giant squib, like, out of her head. You can see the tags on the squib, too, yeah. but, I mean, for 70s, it was actually... Yeah. It actually, like... And I was not... I was, ex- like, oh, I was like, holy shit. I was well, not expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting it, because they're like... You know, in these movies, you have those scenes where there, a thing happens, and then we have to assemble the team... You don't usually kill off see... half the team before you even see Yeah, them. you usually don't see the members of the team get their brains blown out in the first five minutes. Mm-mm. So then... That's because Ted V. Mickles takes a different approach to filmmaking, okay? It subverts your expectations. See, this is the mastermind at work. It is. We are watching creativity mm-hmm. and art from this Ted V. Mickles. Yes, this isn't... It subverts your expectations. This transcends film. It does. Okay. It does, and it it just you know you see <laughs> you see all this shit so much. It's always the same, and then this comes along. I some say Ted V. Mickles is a director. I say he's a visionary, an artist, an artiste. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Look, then... I'm sure I'm sure he's a visionary, <laughs> but his vision is uh not is not it's not 2020. Oh, it's it's nonsense. <laughs> it's glorious nonsense. So then we get uh, Sabrina sitting in like a, a restaurant, club, a club, um, and she just sit. I don't know why she's there. It doesn't. Really... I, I think that was where they were supposed to meet. Mm. Yeah, and then the same doofus from earlier with a cigarette in his mouth sits down and okay, he sits down and he's just like, well, okay, it's like I'm gonna try and get away far as far away from the microphone as possible, but. It was like, who are you? You could not hear a fucking thing. Yeah. All we knew is from what she said. I had no idea what he was saying. The only thing I knew is from what she was saying. And it's not like our volume was down. No. Like, we we had it up so we could hear it. You could hear her fine, but him, I don't know. He's, He's fucking whisper mode. And... She she's like okay well uh, can I have a cigarette? And he just takes the cigarette out of his mouth. Well, he like licks, licks it, it and then like gives it to her. And then she's like looking at it. He's like put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. That's the only thing we heard from. Yes. Him. Well, that's the most important line of the movie. And then put we put get... it in your mouth. That's no. what this movie says to you. Mm-hmm. Ted so, B. Mickles is saying that. Except he's saying what? he's telling put you put this film in your brain <laughs> and remember it because you're gonna. I was you're gonna, gonna say. Uh, I was gonna say Ted Mickles wants something else to be. <laughs> 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 we'll get to that. <laughs> but, um. So uh, she gets a lighter and like points it, and it's not a lighter. It's a fucking like mini flamethrower. Yeah, so we get flames covering the screen, and while she this guy's burns, like yelling. Yeah, she burns his face, and runs away. And then uh, there's a shootout. Yep, a really bad shootout, and then An uh, amazing shootout. And then they're back at the the headquarters where Big Bertha is, and they're like saying like how the 
the messenger, the pigeon isn't the only messenger, but this yeah. one doesn't have wings. Yeah. And then there's a mole yep. implying. And then that. like Sabrina's like checking out like the next like doll squad candidates. Not yet. Remember oh. they go to uh shoot skeet. Oh, that's right, and they're talking about how this is where they're talking about like how the implants they the there's like metal discs metal disc implants in these people in these people and they're like that's how they know that they're the bad guys that's how they know they're the bad guys and apparently that's also how they control people Mm -hmm. which okay fine well uh, apparently later it's also how they identify people as like like good or bad good or bad yes which perfectly fine well yeah, so they're shooting skeet and like they're talking about all this and then and then, and then she says you have a mess like there is a messenger in your headquarters yeah. but this one doesn't fly yeah and then they go and she uh they go to their her car and she shows them a bag of gadgets she has uh, a, um, a satchel of ga- gadgets. yes she has bombs she has a lipstick camera and then my favorite she has a liquid mm-hmm. that you mix with alcohol. Yes. And it creates a bomb inside the person. Specifically alcohol. Yeah, you have to mix it with alcohol. Not Coca-Cola. Literally, it makes the person explode. Yes. I'm not shitting mm-hmm. you. They have a liquid that makes a person explode. A mm-hmm. bunch of other stuff. It's all batshit insane. And the satchel, if you're done with it has a bomb equipped i don't know why they like said that though because they don't explode the satchel well you know why they said that because it's fucking cool it is cool it reminds because it reminds me of james bond q has nothing on this well q didn't have exploding liquid q would only do one of these like one per movie in this they just shoved them all in one movie they only had he only had one movie to explain all this yes so unfortunately yeah right mm-hmm <laughs> so they go back to the headquarters and Sabrina's looking at like Big Bertha on the next candidates yeah. for the doll squad. Then she goes to a uh, very awkward strip club. Remember? No, this is where they find the mole, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. you forgot about that part. So mm-hmm. she's looking at Big Bertha for next candidates and like... The secretary. Li- literally, the secretary is holding a gun walking through like Slowly. with her hand held high and like mm-hmm walking towards big bertha and like sabrina just somehow knows Mm -hmm. that she's the mole yeah and then like starts and then like gets a hold of her gets the gun and interrogates her they figure out where the island is it's off the coast of venezuela she's like pulling her hair and like which uh it's funny because it, it like it's off the coast of venezuela which i hope i don't have to tell you that is a a whole different continent from the u.s but for some fucking reason it it seems like it takes like they get there in no time it it seems like they actually do get there it's like no fucking time because like the guy from his um the main bad guy like sends henchmen from his headquarters off the coast of venezuela to this fucking carnival that's presumably back in the u.s and it takes them like an hour so that when they're interrogating the yeah it's fucking weird it, when they're integrating the girl, she's like, "Oh, I love him. I, he's he's like, I love him and stuff like that." Mm-hmm. And then the Sabrina is like, "Oh, well, sweetie, sex and security just don't mix." Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. She says that. So they keep her as a hostage because I guess they're gonna use her to get to the guy. Apparently. To be fair, will. What was his name? Eamon? He's the, he's the smoothest man ever, Will. Sure. He's so charming. Sure. Is this where we see him, or do we see him in the after, after the... I don't fucking remember. I can't remember either, but we'll do the next, the doll so, squads. She goes to a library, yeah. and the librarian's like, oh, do no, you no. have a book to... Re- oh, yeah, yeah. Do you have a book to return? And she's like, yes, and she like unfolds the, the book to like a picture of like... There's a picture of Uncle Sam Uncle and a... Uncle Sam... The Uncle Sam, like, I want you for the military, and a sticky note. Yeah. And presumably the sticky note has scribbled on it, hey, bitch, I want you to join the doll squad. 
Join the Doll Squad. You're activated. Yeah. Apparently, these are all undercover agents. Doll Squad activated. Yeah. They're yeah. all. They all have very normal jobs, and except for the stripper. <laughs> now your favorite part, which is the awkward stripper. Okay, she's sitting there. There is a stripper who is doing my favorite sexy move, where you just <laughs> the awkward white person dance. No, she's just spinning. I know. She's just spinning 360. She does over like the weird like and over. Yeah. And then she does a weird dance and then it's over and then okay. And then it looks it's weird cuz it's not a strip club. I don't know what's so, going on here. Well, here's the thing. Let me let me explain the movie magic here, okay? They could not get a strip club. That's the that's the secret here. Okay? Ted V. Mickles wanted a strip club for this movie, but they I guess, for some reason, no strip club would let them actually shoot this nonsense in there. They were just like, go fuck yourself. But some, like, nightclub did. Well, because, it wasn't really a nightclub. It was like a yeah. live band club. She's just, like, dancing, like, what is just on the floor. There's no stage. She's just dancing on the floor. My, my favorite is the audience. They are all, like, grandmas. Yeah, and there's, like, one dude. There is, like, one old dude and 99 grandmas you yeah. know what it looks like yeah. it looks like fucking bingo it's fucking weird it's like bingo night at the retirement home yeah so she walks off stage and, and the best part is like all their faces like they're like smiling and like getting into it but it's just like <laughs> the weirdest part for me was like after she leaves yeah the state the quote unquote stage, stage the band strikes up again and everyone starts dancing on yeah. the floor like like Okay. Like, that's the only time they had to rent the fucking... Yeah. And then they go to, like, the back, and it's, like, the dressing area, which looks like looks like someone's fucking bathroom. <laughs> and Sabrina's telling her about, like, what happened and, like, who, who they think is behind it, and now it's, like, an island. Yeah. And is trying to convince this... the agent to... And she does. ...join her, and she does. Then she goes to a psychiatrist psychiatrist and she has a picture and she's like oh yeah Eamon he uh I believe he has an Oedipus complex and I'm just like what the fuck like, why are we getting into like mentality she explains all this stuff about like his psychology which goes by the way we have not seen this guy no yet we don't know anything about him nope. we don't know why he exploded anything we have no idea what his motivations are I have issues and yet now we're now we're just going into the psychology. This might um, shock you, Will, but I have issues with this movie. What? I know. You have issues have with issues. one of the movies we're watching on I this know. glorious podcast? His name is, like, Eamon O'Donnell. Now, if there's a more Irish name, I, I don't know. Maybe, this... like, Billy Flanagan. Now, I will admit, this guy is nothing. Okay. Nothing even resembling Irish. He... Just no, but for some ungodly reason, he has a ridiculously like joke Irish name. Okay, then, yeah, why the fuck not? Sure, I don't know. And then she goes to the swimmer. To the swimmer, this is all this is literally all before we see the villain or yes. wonder why the fuck he's doing it. After of this. this, they show the villain, yeah. So after she goes to the swimmer, do. the swimmer dries off her legs for some fucking reason, but she's still dripping wet. And then she and goes, same thing, she convinces her. Then, you see the bad guy and his, like, batshit insane lair, which is like, it looks like it's built into a cave, but there's like tropical plants and ridiculous colors and fish tanks and everything. So he's talking to one of his henchmen and the henchman's like, oh, they're, they're going to like get another agent. Yeah. She's working, she's undercover at the carnival. At a carnival. I have no fucking idea how they got this information. I don't either. Because they cut their sleeper. But, I, you know... I, I guess they knew this I before. Know. I have no fucking idea. Who knows? And, but anyway, so... But there's there, a woman there. There's a woman there, and she's talking about, like, how... She's jealous. She's like, oh, I heard she's pretty. Yeah. And then... You like pretty girls. And I was like, why is she, uh... Why is she so salty? And, and he then, slaps her. I don't remember course, what the fuck she because, says. Because she's like... Oh, you're gonna capture her. I bet, like, you're gonna do stuff to her. And then he smacks her, like, how dare you? 
So then he gets an ingenious plan that um, he's going to send his henchmen to capture this woman before mm-hmm. before, the, before they before make contact. Before they can make contact with no, her. No, okay. So this is what's weird. So according to the movie, because later on we found out that they did make contact with her and she wants all of them to meet together yeah. at like a place. So what they do is they send this weirdo to tell her that, hey, the meeting has been called off. Yeah. You need to come with me. Yep, and she uh, she isn't having any of it. So well, she she, fo- does she kind of follows him, yeah. and then she like holds her purse up and is like, "There's a gun in here. Like you make you you tell me what's going on, and I won't shoot you." And he's what's like, "What's he say, Will? What's he do?" He's like, "Oh, like what's that over there?" Yeah, and she looks. This is a secret agent mm-hmm. that got. I I hate to use this cliche. But she was fooled by the oldest trick in the fucking book. Mm-hmm. The, hey, look over there to distract your attention. It's true. It's page one of the sexy spy handbook. Yes. Is if some weirdo tells you, hey, look over there. You do it. Don't, no. Don't hey, don't even hesitate. You, you do it. Yeah. You don't even fucking hesitate. Clearly this lady did not read the secret <laughs> yeah. sexy spy handbook. She well. didn't, mm-hmm. man. Like... That's rule number one. You know Don't what? look over there when people say look over there. You know what? This movie's one out of ten. Yeah. Unacceptable. <laughs> A spy got tricked. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so... He smacks her around. He smacks her around and then, He's like... like you tried to kill me. You tried to kill me. <laughs> bitch. 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 Like, and then he just... He smacks her unconscious. Puts her in a trunk. And drives her back to the thing. Mm-hmm. And then he puts her down on the couch, smacks her again for good measure. And then keeps smacking her. And then the guy comes up and he's like, stop it. Stop like, it. What are you doing? Like, you go too far with your violence. Um, she, He's like, "He she tried to kill me. Like, I, like, well, I would have killed you if you didn't bring her alive. Mm-hmm. I would have killed her. Well, I would have killed you if you would have killed her. Like, yeah. That's stupid dialogue. It's very, uh, it's very Bond villain, except bad. Yeah, except bad acting, yeah. Bad. Bad everything. So, he has this ingenious plan to get this doctor that he has on the island. Doctor to Kayman? Make, Kayman? Kayman? Okay, I keep... Kayman? Oh, I, I keep I- thinking... <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kind of Doll Squad movie. <laughs> Um, I keep thinking Cayman because there's like Cayman Islands, but it's like they added some bullshit like spelling onto it. Cayman, Cayman, or I can't. I don't even fuck know. it. Yeah, it's dumb. No, it's stupid. Doctor, stupid. But he like they're going to make the doctor make a mask, a mask of this agent's face and superimpose it onto the woman, the woman that like talked back to him. Yes. So they capture her and they like make the face, and then the doll squad. Do you think this might be at all similar to Mission Impossible? Will no, not at all. Yeah, it's no. <laughs> so the doll squad's all talking and like there's this weird girl that's just making a bomb for no reason, and she, she never doesn't talks, talk. does she? No, her name is quote unquote cat. Yes, like literally quotations around cat. Yeah, yeah. That's she the never only talks, name but we they get. keep showing her face, and she just like. What's funny is, like, they're all together talking, and then she's, like, in the corner of the room making a bomb and doing, like, serious faces. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? Greatest character of all time. Seriously. So, she, um, Sabrina goes to the carnival to meet the woman. And we get a scene of Cat, like, preparing a bomb and putting it into a car. A car. That we don't know exactly what it's for. We don't know what it's for. We don't know how the fuck she knows. How did they know that? car? Uh, it still didn't explain what, how they it knew. explains nothing. <laughs> oh, we should mention the secretary also killed herself with, like, a cyanide pill. Yes. Um, but anyway, so, uh... So she goes talks to the woman. Goes talks to the woman. It pretty much immediately knows she's. She immediately knows because the woman's acting weird. Because the woman says she doesn't. She doesn't have any information. Yes, and she's and like, they... "But I told you." She's like, "I don't have any information about the guy. Do you?" She's like, "No, I told you to get the information." And she's like, "Well, I couldn't." And it's all just, it's, you know, 
She's just obviously and then she, something's up. So Sabrina slams her on the car, takes off her wig, and then rips take, the and mask then ri- off. Rips the mask off, and she's like, like "I, I knew, knew it." it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get a scene of like her capturing the girl, putting her in her car. They drive away, and then this weird fuck face gets in the, the car. The guy from earlier, yeah. The guy that was bitch. He tried. To, she tried to kill me. Yeah, he gets in his car. He gets in his Which, car. And then, I, okay. how did they know it was his car? So, yes, he gets in, the car blows up. And they have never seen this guy in the entire movie. Well, I have no fucking I clue. don't know how they knew he was the bad guy. I have What if they no... just blew up some random guy's well, car? Well, to be fair, she did see, she did set it off herself. So it wasn't like it would just go off by itself, but I have no fucking clue. But what's weird is that... When she's putting it in the car, it's next to, like, a bunch of trees. But when he gets in the car, it's just a parking lot. I just want to know how they knew who, which car to put it in, who this guy was. They literally never met him. Because she is cat. And she can sense things, Will. So he's, like, driving after them, and then cat detonates the... And then, again, we get a superimposed image of a fake explosion. Yes. And then the car disappears. It's gone. It just disappears. No shrapnel. No no nothing. In this movie, explosions uh, don't leave debris. They will just... You vanish. You vanish. It's like the Bermuda yeah. Triangle of explosions. <laughs> Everything disappears. You just vanish. So, they go... Like, they know what's up. They go and rescue their agent the one that got kidnapped yeah so they figure out that where this doctor is for i don't know how they like come to all these conclusions they i think she told them she might have the oh well, yeah they, they were yeah. Like, they were trying to like get her to show her and she was like being oddly compliant yeah like a robot mm-hmm. but so um, she tells them and then they go there they take her like nothing and here's the funniest part the woman that they took the one who works for the bad guy, they take her and put her in um, the agent's place. Yeah. Like, because the agent was there tied up on the bed. So they take the other woman, put her on the bed, tie her up. They leave. The woman, literally no argument. Oh, she's fine. She just... And she falls asleep. Yeah. They lay her in bed, tie her up, but she falls asleep. She's like, oh, finally. And then... The doctor calls the bad guy. And is like, kill her. Well, the bad guy's like, Hey, uh, like, my, the girl I sent knows what she's doing. Yeah. Go in and you can kill the agent now. Yeah. You can dispose of the agent. So the guy just goes in and, and shoots just, her. Just blows the brains out of the girl that, done. Done deal. They already saved um... the agent. And this is like, this is all in like a 10 minute scene. It's so funny because like, <coughs> it's so random. <clears throat> like yeah. just okay put her back there she'll get murdered in cold blood yeah like <laughs> like oh my yeah and they have no qualms with doing this either. oh it's great <laughs> they're just like whatever just let her die um so then they they get back together and they, they decide that they're gonna try and get they a, need a boat they need a boat and the so they're, they're like gonna split up so like two of them are gonna go like patrol bars well they said that they were gonna have they're like, they have. Well, they want some of them to go to bars and see if they can find a boat or like hire a boat. So they do, and then two so, other ones are in a jeep, driving yeah. across the desert, because she told them where the hideout was. The woman from earlier. Yes, yeah, so they take a jeep. Two of them take a jeep to the base, and then the next scene, they literally just get a boat. For, yeah. We don't know where they got the boat. We don't know who they, they hired to, for the boat. They went to bars, Will. Well, apparently, but like yeah. they didn't show any. Like, they couldn't afford it. You know what? Ted B. Mickles is too good for exposition, okay? We don't need explanations. Well, it's called We Couldn't Afford to Shoot It We're in a Bar. We're just going to jump right to them getting on the boat. We're just going to jump. They found a guy. He's fine, whatever. And then some fucking how, they're trying to contact on the radio, and she can't get through to him. And, and then, then we get another, a, a fucking another sleeper agent, like another who, another backstabber. I guess, like, I don't know if he works for the boat guy or what, but he then it doesn't explain where he comes from. It doesn't at all. he then informs on them through their own phone? 
It's like, okay, whatever. Which makes no sense. But what, gives, yeah. you know, whatever. Who gives so, a fuck? The other two Ted are B. driving. Ted B. Nichols <laughs> obviously doesn't, so why should we? Exactly. <laughs> if he did give a fuck, then you'd know it's worth it. But yeah. if he doesn't, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. So, because then the other two in the Jeep, they pull up to like a checkpoint in the middle of the desert. This is my favorite scene. They're, the guards are like, what are you doing here? They're like, we're rock hunting. And you're like, rock hunting? And one of them's like, yeah, I hear it's virgin territory around here. And he's like, what do you mean what virgin you mean? territory? What do you mean virgin like, territory? Fucking Sherlock, what do you think she means virgin territory? The fuck, yeah, like... Virgin territory means untouched. She's making a, uh... She's doing a thing, Will. So they kind of, like, convince them to look in the back of their car. They look in the back of their car. They're like, you guys want some cookies? You want cookies? Like They get cookies they get and cookies, liquor. And then the girl, while the other girl's getting them cookies, one of the girls pours the exploding liquid uh-huh. into vodka and mixes it up. And they're like, mmm, doesn't this taste good? And they start, like, swigging it down. Like, guards start swigging it down. And the other like, one starts swinging it down. Pa- passing it oh, back and forth. And they're like, oh, I don't feel so good. And they like walk away and like they saunter away and like, oh. And the girls get back in the car <laughs> and drive away. And I shit you not, this is the greatest scene in cinematic history. Oh, <laughs> this is, it's beautiful. It's the greatest spy scene ever. So the guy, the guards, they're like, oh. And then like one of them just explodes and then like like the car and like the, the rocket There's they nothing. just disappear they disappear <laughs> <laughs> and then the other guy's like Ugh! and then like he explodes and disappears but it's like a like again like a superimposed I- a superimposed image of an explosion and then the guy disappears it's beautiful it's it's i was i was losing my shit at this scene it's fucking it's beautiful it's amazing <laughs> like they just vanish into thin air like uh, that. And then we get a and then we get twenty minutes of these <laughs> fucking idiots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guards are just driving around this fucking fortress and they're like just sitting on top of the hood of a car, just driving <laughs> around. There are perfectly fine seats in the car. And they're just sitting on top of the They're sitting on the hood. <laughs> <laughs> like there's some people hanging on off the back. They're sitting on top of the car. You know why? Just driving around. You know why? Because Ted V. Mickles thought it looked fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, two guys sitting on the hood of a jeep. I also want to mention, for some stupid reason, all of them are wearing sunglasses, but and they have they have goggles. But on their helmets, they have perfectly fine goggles. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, none uh... of them. None of them actually have the goggles on their eyes. Right. They're just on their helmet. Yeah. Like. Makes perfect why? sense, right? But you know why? Because Ted V. Mickles thought it looked fucking awesome. You know what? If he thinks it looks awesome, it does. I mean, we have to. Yeah. We kind of have to. We have to accept this. We can't have. Well, look, we can have our own opinions in other cases. But if it's Ted V. Mickles, you can't. <sighs> you just can't. Yeah, you're right. So, so we get the girls on the boat. They get they, off. They decide to take a littler boat, a smaller rowboat to the island. Uh-huh. And then they got the henchman, the like, evil guy, is like, I'm going to go follow after them and tell them to, like, and the Be guy's like, or something. tell them to meet me on the yeah. beach on, like, two days from now, and then yeah. blah, blah, blah. So he leaves. He follows them. They get in, like, matching jumpsuits. All green jumpsuits with a white line going down the side, the left side. We get endless scenes of these idiots driving around in their fucking Jeeps and with these their dumb girls, helmets. And like, sneaking around. And eventually the guy, the secret, the sleeper agent or whatever, catches up to him and, like, leads them into a group of... Well, remember, he goes to the... He's, like, taking this weird pill, I think. He's addicted to drugs. Yeah. So he goes to the bad guy and, like bad guy's like oh well like i'll give you more drugs when you get capture the women Mm -hmm. and so he gets this wrist watch and goes off and finds the girls and then they get captured yes and his rich watch his wrist watch has like a gps in it they can track him yes somehow so he leads them there and then they capture them and they tie them up handcuff them and 
the goal is lost, and then one of them gets smacked in the face because she tries to convince them that she's the. Yeah, it's the same girl that kept getting smacked in the. This girl cannot catch yes. a break in this movie. She's the one that got captured, and she had to go through all that trouble. Now she gets smacked in the face and gets like a bloody nose. <laughs> well, so she uh, she kept telling the group that she like because the guy still thinks that the other girl's alive, right? Yes. Which they never. No. They, they so never expounded. She tries upon to that. convince them, and uh, they beep they, the thing and. Because she doesn't have the the chip, she doesn't beep back, so they just smack her in the face, yep. and eventually, the other two show up and just start mowing people the fuck down with sniper, like with like silenced pistols, and machine guns, machine guns, everything. They just come... there's like squibs everywhere, and it looks like commando because it's one of those things where they just shoot and like um like fifty guys just drop dead. Yeah. Like and when I'm and I mean like wildly drop dead where they like they like jump in the air and fall back. No, I also, I mentioned that the audio was all over the place. I would say even more so the night to day to day to night to night to night ratio. Yes, is all fucking. Most over of the, the place. scene is nighttime, but for some reason every like two shots it'll show daytime. It's daytime as nighttime, sort of. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, sort of. It makes no fucking the sense. The sky is blue. Yeah. <laughs> so they're shooting all these guys. They finally they free the they girls. mow enough people down and free the girls, except for the, well, <laughs> except for the girl that gets smacked around. A she little gets shot. Place. She gets shot and she, she just dies. She and dies. They just forget about her right away. Yeah. She's dead. That There's poor girl. A like a ton fuck. of them getting shot. Eventually, um, Sabrina gets captured. Yes. They take her to the henchman, and then it's like the scene in Bond where they fucking explain the evil scheme. Oh, but God. then we also find out that they had a past. Yep. Bat, apparently when they were in Berlin, what, what doing whatever. Germany, because I think he was an agent before, too. Yes, he was. He used to be an agent. I guess they were on a mission together, and uh, naughty things happened. What a fucking cliche. Well... This has never happened before or since. <laughs> what a fucking cliche. <laughs> they are, yeah, so they have a past, and he's being, Larry, like, you know, he used to be very loving and gentle, and remember all the fun times we had? Mm hmm. And he tells her his plan. So he's cultivating a liquid, a uh, virus, mm -hmm. um, to spread to people, to, you know, get world leaders to give him money what is the what is the virus will i want to say this with the utmost uh what the fuckness which i'll comment on something after you say this <sighs> no i say this with all sincerity this is actually what they are cultivating this is what they're going to spread the bubonic plague throwback the bubonic plague and how they're going to <laughs> this is almost so stupid they're going to give all these fucking like leaders of the the country or these henchmen or whatever they're like fucking like ra like caged rats yes that they can infect with the bubonic and... plague and spread around their countries and the rats will bite people and they're the and rats spread will... the plague yeah and they'll, like and they'll breed other rats that will spread the plague. You know how the bubonic plague actually mm -hmm. existed. But, like, what the fuck? Well, party like it's 1399. Yeah. Okay. The bubonic plague. Throwback. What the fuck? Yeah. Throwback. What? Like, I would say, holy shit, that's uh -huh. a throwback. That is a fucking just long throwback. Yeah. Yeah. He has a he has a meeting with all these representatives of these uh of these countries, and he's gonna tell them how to spread their diseases. One of them is the uh, oh the beautiful <laughs> Frenchman that's not actually French. Well, he's so French. Yeah, because that accent really tells. He us sounds that he's like French. he sounds like Christopher Walken. <laughs> he sounds yeah. He sounds like some guy doing a very very bad. Impression like, of like a he Frenchman. draws his fucking words out like crazy. Yeah, because he's desperately trying to hold on to his 
like weird accent. Yeah. So they give them all rats, and they're like, when you take them back to your lab, you will inject them. And, and I remember you were like, is this a fucking science experiment? They have to take the rats back and then inject the rats in their own lab. Yeah. Okay. Also, we want to mention the villain's lab is like, it's built into a fucking fireplace. Yeah. It's like a cave that has a fireplace. It's like someone's living it. room. Yeah. There's a table with like beakers on it. Yeah. And it's like, that's your lab. Okay. So the girl's like inspecting all the stuff. Like she, so Sabrina is like, Looking at all this stuff, and the guy from earlier with the eye patch. Yes, he uh, he sneaks up on her again and starts and choking he's like, her out. You took my eye. Well, now I will take yours and whatever. So he like, oh, he has a cigarette in his hand, and he's like threatening to like put it out in her eye. So she grabs a butter knife off the oh, table. Oh yes, and then a she... butter knife and stabs his other eye. His other eye and shoots him. And then shoots him dead. And then, what Eamon shows up again. Captures her again. Captures her again. And then, he wants some alone time. But first, he's like, he has a syringe, and he's like, I will inject you with bubonic plague. And it's like, dude, really? How fucking convenient. While the rest of them are, like, setting up bombs and shit. Getting yeah. everything ready. Because she said earlier, like, I want you to blow this place up at midnight. Even yeah. if I'm, like... Even, Even if, if I'm, I'm still there. Yeah. So So they're setting up bombs. They set a huge bomb in like the main henchman's bag. Yes. The cat. Yes. The silent lady yep. puts a bomb a gigantic bomb in uh, the doctor's bag. So <laughs> she's um Sabrina is in a room with the main bad guy. And they start like kissing and He's like, You know I have to kill you. Um, but I just wanted some alone time before I had to do it. And she's like, she's like, oh, but I was going to stop you. And he's like, how would you do it? Like, oh, God. oh, by kissing you, by kissing you. And then I would, I would like, I'd give you a kiss. And then he like grabs her hand yeah. and he's like, ah, she, she has like a syringe in yeah. her hand. He's like, ah, nice try. Mm hmm. And she, he's like, and what they, else would you do? They laugh it off. Like, ah, ha, ha. She's like, well, then I would push, push you. you and I would. Like, pour vodka on you. She pours... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she pours the vodka on him. And as he's laughing, she runs over to a light switch, grabs the cord, rips it out of the fucking wall, throws it on him. It electrocutes him. But it's not any electrocution. It's... Like the explosions, it's like a superimposed, yes, like lightning thing. But on Will, him. she poured vodka on him, and like, what? In what world does that work? In what world does this like? You don't, you can't pull something out of a, a socket and then just like throw it on someone and it'll just. I'm just glad I didn't kill him because that would have fucking pissed ah, me off. But the next scene, she does... All that happens is he gets pissed off and starts choking her. And then she... Because earlier, way back in the movie, she mentioned that she has a ring and has mace in it. Yeah. She so sprays she, him with mace. She sprays him with mace. He's like on the couch cowering. She, she grabs a decorative sword off the fucking wall and stabs and him. And him in the fucking side. Beautiful. And she's all distraught that she killed him because, like, they had a past and everything. You know, she, she loved wasn't, him. She wasn't upset that when all the other do Doll Squad no. girls died, but whatever. So... Well, they, they, they were in love. So they go... They So the other girl that was planting all the bombs takes him away. They do a bunch of more firefights and, like, shooting and, you know, all this stuff. And they the finally... He shows the doctors getting in the airplane. And then they take Kat, off. Cat explodes the 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 bomb, and the, airplane the plane disappears. just disappears into nothing. Yep, yeah, no no debris. As just, it happens in real life, just disappears. It just goes away. When you explode something, it just disappears. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah, it's clean. It's not messy at all. Then they uh, then they get far enough back they and they see the thing explode. They detonate and all the bombs. Blurry and all. as fuck. Because they probably weren't exploding anything. 
But it looked like something was exploding. Like I don't know what it was. Maybe a miniature, but like I have it's no idea. So blurry. It looks like a fucking firework you shot from like a hill. It was a miniature and a firework. Yep, yeah, probably. But I just guarantee like, it it's because so... it, looked, it looked like a like a you know one of those fountains that sprays the sparkles. Yeah, it looked like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just one of those pop like um the spinner things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah just throw that like in there. The ground bloom. Um, so they go back to the beach. <laughs> I no, don't know no, no. how they knew to go. No, how did they well. know? Ugh. You forget the bazooka. Oh, that's right. So they're driving, and the, one of the girls is machine gunning on the top. They run into a bunch of guys, and they start firing. And then one of them just has a bazooka. They load it, and they fire it, and again, an explosion. Car blows up, disappears, and then some guys on fire. One guy's on fire. It's like okay, and that's done. They go back to the beach. They are chilling in their bikinis. How did they know to meet on the beach? The guy never told them to meet on the beach. Well, no. They told him to wait. Remember? But the other douchebag told him to leave. But. They're just there. So either plan works. So, because they just told him, like, just stay here, like, and then we'll come back. Yeah. So I guess he was supposed to just chill there. And then they're just there in their bikinis, and I guess presumably they've been waiting, like, for fucking ever, because the guy was like, oh, come back for them in, like, two days or something. So I guess they're just, they've just been chilling there for a day. <laughs> and he then shows up, they get in, they call the the senator and his, whoever the hell, the people who hired them. Yep, and the guy's like, well, guess oh, what? we need you on another mission. Bertha is talking again, and there's another case for you, and she's just like, well, you can tell Bertha to shove it up her, and then it starts like... Like going in and out of frequency because yeah, the like... guy's fucking with them. Then he grabs the phone, and he's like, oh, ha, ha. Like, I can give you some time off. How much do you what need? You need? Uh, I need a week. Just, like... To know what it feels like to be a woman again or whatever. For, like, woman time or something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, so they get off the phone, she hangs it up, goes and talks to the... Uh, ship captain. The ship captain. And it was like, well, where do you want to go next? Oh, just take us somewhere pretty. I just want to... I don't want to go back. Just just take us around somewhere pretty. He's like, well, it must be nice not having to worry about anything, like, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, it is nice. Freeze frame. The end. The end. That's how it ends. That's literally how it ends. <laughs> oh, my God. Freeze frame. The end. Oh. And then we get a end credits with a... Uh... <laughs> a really long-ass, like, recap of, like, what happened at we the see, headquarters. like, them in action. And it shows us the names of the actresses. The best part, though, is the girl who, like... Who got dies? Beaten around and stuff, and dies. Her highlight is her getting shot. Yeah, and killed. What did she do to Ted V. Mickles to make her like just like she is the most hated character on this entire show? I don't know. It's like they played a, a joke on her. Yeah. Like yeah, all these other actresses get like their awesome moments. You get nothing. You get a your dying scene. You're dying. Yeah. <laughs> and there is a. They have like a a song playing over it and it's called like it's, veronica's it's song or sabrina's song. song song for sabrina or something and it's like a basically a bond she's like sabrina yeah it's sabrina. very very bond-esque <laughs> extremely bond-esque yeah it sounds like like a diamonds are forever kind of yeah or um it's it reminds me of the song from thunderball yeah because that was uh also had a male singer it's true but it's the same like kind of tune with like the over the top voice like but yeah yep that's uh that's fucking doll squad the doll squad the doll squad now what are your final thoughts on the film it's um it's it's stupid and and i kind of liked it i was i that's my final thoughts too i was kind of entertained at how bad it was oh it's bad it's bad but it's entertaining it's like a entertaining bad how does this compare against Wonder Woman? I actually like Wonder Woman more. I but... do too. It's funny because I think the fights in this are 
more competent than Wonder Woman. I think Wonder that's Woman. what made Wonder Woman great, though, because, is because in Wonder the fight Woman, scene, yeah, scenes are so incompetent. In Wonder Woman, they were very desperately trying to direct and edit around the fact that none of them knew how, how to fight at to all to do anything. Whereas in this, like, you can like see them like on camera, like doing their silly kung fu shit, but. Wonder Woman had that amazing car chase scene. <laughs> yes. And brain sex and other nonsense. And this has bubonic plague. Yeah, bubonic plague. What a stupid villainous plot. Like, I thought, like, Quantum of Solace had a stupid thought. Like, a stupid villain. But holy shit. What was the... Oh, right. The water. Selling... No, I know. Not Quantum of Solace. I don't want to think about that movie. <laughs> Um, Wonder Woman, they were uh, stealing organs. Yeah. From athletes. <laughs> yeah, and putting it into, like, rich people. Old fucks, yeah. Yep. Oh, God. The real flaw of this movie is that it did not have Ross Hagen. Or a sequel. The greatest leading actor ever. Dude, Wonder Woman needs a fucking sequel. You know what we need? Wonder Woman and Doll Squad. A crossover. A crossover. Yeah. Like,. The versus doll, wonder doll women or... like because these because the wonder women in the movie are the bad guys okay mm -hmm. even though they're presumably even though from the poster and everything else you presume they're they're good but no they're not yeah no so what you need if someone is if one of these fuckers is still alive <laughs> what you need you make a sequel doll squad versus wonder woman yeah and mike the insurance man <laughs> <laughs> the insurance investigator teams up with, with the doll squad. The doll squad. He sleeps. We, with, he sleeps with all of them. Of we course. need it. Yeah, dude. He, he sleeps with all of them, of course, because he's just the smoothest man ever. Clearly, we need this fucking movie. Yes, and they go up against them, and you have because if you combine the awful kung fu of that to the mediocre kung fu of this, you know what you will get? Hmm. The best kung fu. The the only kung fu. The best shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be awesome i also just want to mention a a weird trivia thing about this movie presumably charlie's angels was a a ripoff of this because the the story goes that the guy who made charlie's angels saw this at a premiere or something and like a couple years later he made Charlie's Angels, and I know Ted V. Mickles actually sued him for that. But come on, this isn't this isn't anything like fucking Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels is way more competent than this shit. But Ted V. Mickles has some balls because again, he's a visionary. He is a mastermind. If you think about it, up until this point, because even even counting Wonder Woman. You didn't really have. I will admit, the, a team of like badass women yes. fighting people. That like, it's cool. A team of spies like this, like nobody before that, before this had that. And, I hate that we have to give this credit yeah. to Ted V. Mickles, but you never really saw that before. Because if they really did rip this off for Charlie's Angels, that's fucking hilarious. Then in a way, Ted V. Mickles was the brainchild yes. for fucking Charlie's Angels. Yes. That's saying something. So in 1973, we've had two movies with a gang of women beating people up. I hope we get more, though. I love them. I don't think there'll be any more for this year, but I hope that... I, I hope so, too. <laughs> this starts a trend. Um, so just a quick quick update. Uh, sorry we took like a week off. Um, I've been moving into a new house. Um, and we're trying to kind of set up a studio and everything, and we're getting that all going. But we wanted to bring in more content, so we decided to only take a week break for that. Uh, thanks for your patience, and again, thanks for listening. Uh, and that's pretty much all I have to update people on. Anything you need to say more? Mm -mm. All right. Well, this movie's on Amazon Prime. If you uh... if you want to watch it, is it is on Amazon Prime. Just search the Doll Squad. It there is a 2014 like remastered it's very version. very remastered it like really well done i'm surprised but them uh, them colors mm. prime um but yeah i mean shame about the audio do you want to 
if you want to watch it with us and uh, you know talk about it on the Facebook page I'll be on there so anyway uh, this has been Will and this has been Alex and we are they mostly come out at night and we will talk to you later Sabrina Sabrina uh, <laughs>